With that introduction, now I want to start talking about actual baseball pitches. Uh, so, from what we've been able to discern from watching MLB baseball, uh, there are a few seam shifted weight pitches that are currently being used. And uh, we'll describe those first, and, and, and I'll explain why we're not studying those particular pitches in the lab right now. Um, and I want to start with uh, what my friend Michael Augustine has, has termed the Disco ball changeup. This is the style of changeup that uh, Steven Strasberg and others throw. Uh, it spins somewhat two seam on an axis. It's near three o'clock, and it has excellent uh, movement downward, as you can see in that video there. Um, one thing I wanted to point out as we uh, before we get into that too much, uh, I want to go back to this concept of hemisphere line because uh, that's the the, the region where the seams can have an effect. It's the, what I call the fattest part of the ball. And, and that changes as the ball travels. Initially, when the ball is moving straight to the side, right there, uh, that line is vertical. The, the hemisphere line is indicated by these green lines here. So when, that's, when the ball is moving horizontally, the hemisphere line is vertical. But as the ball starts to drop, it tilts forward. And so the, <clears throat> that introduces the opportunity for some things to change along the pitch. And also makes I think that this this disco ball changeup um, very effective. I'll explain that. I'll, I'll come back to that concept as we as we go ahead. So I, there's my ball on the drill again on the left, and you can see that it looks a lot like uh, Strasburg's changeup from the back. You can see that seam on the top of the ball that's real prominent. Uh, it's not a two seamer. It's it's uh, the orientation of it's a little bit off rotated off of that, so that one seam, the one on top is always in the same location. You notice that the seam on the bottom is very fuzzy uh, as that happens. So uh, uh, it was, it was um, Rob Friedman that put me onto this. And when I started looking into it and, and discovering um, baseball savant data and how interesting that is, uh, I, I, I was easy, you know, it's, it's a simple thing to go and download every changeup that Steven Strasberg threw last year. And when you do that um, and you focus on the downward acceleration of the pitch. That's what's plotted here. This is a histogram of the downward acceleration on every change of P through last year. Uh, what you notice is that about 10% of them averaged over the entire flight of the ball, accelerate downward with more than the force of gravity or, or more than the rate of gravity. So what that's saying, I mean, that, that, that might not sound like a lot at first, but that's saying that this thing is being pushed down. It's not falling down, it's being pushed down. If you go back and look at uh, what the pitch looked like here, it has actually an upward gyro, or I'm sorry, an upward Magnus component to it. So it's being forced upward by its spin, but the data from TrackMan says it's actually being pushed downward some of the time. And uh, that, that caught my attention. And uh, so I asked myself, you know, um, is that, well, I'll get to that on the next slide, is that normal? Um, we can't do this in the lab because it requires gyro, and I'll, I'll explain why that is in just a minute. But first I want to talk about, is it normal for that to happen? Uh, Alan Nathan asked me, hey, how do you know that this isn't just noise from the TrekMan data? And, uh, and so in order to try to convince myself and him that it was not, I went and downloaded all of Strasburg's fastballs, and those are in the blue here. And a couple things I want to point out. First of all, they accelerate uh, downward with less than 1G because they're actually being... Um, the, the Magnus force on a fastball moves it upward. So it's, uh, it's, and that kills about half of the force of gravity for his fastball. That's why they see that 0 0.5 there. Uh, sorry, 0.5 right here. But more importantly, from, from what I'm trying to prove here, the, the width of this is narrow. It's uh, the standard deviation of the fastball is about 0.05. Uh, the changeup is much wider. So uh, that gives me some confidence that what's happening over here is real. Also notice that the fastballs are not skewed. The changeups are, they're skewed to the bottom side. So occasionally um, uh, he gets a very strong downward force. And I would point out that uh, I believe that most of the force on these pitches happens at the, uh, as it approaches home plate. And these data are averaged over the entire flight of the ball because of the way that TrackMan reports data or until, as they have up until now. And so I think it's actually bigger than what, what this shows. Uh, to show that Strasburg's special, he's uh, here. Here I am comparing him to several other changeups um, and a couple teammates. I've got Sanchez and Scherzer. I noticed that Scherzer's 
changeups look very similar to Bauer or to uh, Strasburg's. Bowers don't have that downward acceleration, and neither do Sanchez. And so I, I wanted to put Sanchez on here because he's using the same measurement system as these two guys and not getting that same performance. And then Bauer is somebody uh, that's playing on a different team, uh, so probably a different measurement system, different TrackMan data, uh, uh, and also doesn't have that same thing. So you see that these are cutting off pretty close to negative one. So on a good day, theirs fall like a rock, whereas Strasburg and Scherzer have a changeup that's actually being pushed downward. Uh, and it's not being pushed downward by the spin like a curveball is, so it has to be something else. And uh, I believe it's the seams. Uh, on top of that, uh, um, um, a, a new friend of mine whose name is Miller Hogan, he's a minor leaguer in the Ray system, sent me this plot. This is showing the vertical movement of Steven Strasburg's changeup over a, a number of years, starting back when he came into the league near 2012. And uh, I'm going to draw some lines on here to try to influence how you how you interpret this. But I see that a uh, very long period of time as being um, uh, just noise. And then more recently, a rather sharp downward trend in the vertical movement of his changeup. So not only is it good, I think it's getting better. And if you watched the playoffs last year, I think it was really, really impressive. Uh, so um, I, I will admit I used to be a, a Steven Strasburg hater as a Braves fan. Um, uh, I, I want to thank, uh, at this point, uh, Rob Freeman for showing me how special Strasburg is, and I don't think anybody has a hard time understanding that after the playoffs last year. So <clears throat> that's the disco ball. I want to move on now to uh, talking about really what is the first identified seam-shifted wake pitch. And that's um, the Laminar Express. This is something that Trevor Bauer used to talk about a lot. I, I don't hear him talking about it as much these days, uh, but uh, he as a mechanical engineer, understood that you could cause the flow over the ball to be asymmetric. And the way he sought to do that was to try to make a smooth part of the ball uh, so that side would stay laminar and the other side would stay turbulent. Um, it's the wrong idea, but it had the right uh, effect because when you have a smooth, when the ball is smooth on the left side, that means you have a seam on the right side. And so uh, it turns out he was exactly right in the orientations that he was trying to carve out. Uh, although I don't think he ever figured out exactly how to control this, how to make it happen. It does happen occasionally, and, uh, and it's very, um, very effective when it does, as you can see. To, to me, these two sinkers look the same. They have the, the similar spin, velocity, and axis, um, but uh, you can see Bauer's pitch is exploding upward and outward, and then I think that's the kind of typical action of a seam-shifted weight pitch. So uh, that's hard to study in the lab because it's hard for us to generate gyro in the lab. Uh, my cannon uh, does not is not able to generate gyro, but uh, Washington State University has a derivative of that cannon that they also developed that can uh, impart gyro spin. And uh, I, I traveled out there a while ago, to, and they were very generous to let me use it for two days. And the, the, the main result from those two days is this particular video. And it's showing two pitches that have the same spin, speed, and axis but different orientations. The top ball has a seam shifted wake orientation. It's very much like the video of my drill over here. The bottom ball is just arbitrary. And you can see that they arrive many, many inches apart. I wanted to go back again and show you that Bauer's pitch on the right here moves up and outward, which is what I believe that this laboratory pitch also did, up and outward relative to one where the seams are having no net effect. So the laminar express and the disco ball change of each require some gyro. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the cannon that we have um, from Washington State at our lab uh, does not have a, a gyro uh, capability. In fact, uh, nearly every pitching machine in the world does not. It's, it's a very difficult thing to achieve um, so the, the, the machine I use for this is very special, and I don't have that back in my lab. And so um, we're not able to study these pitches. I think I understand how they work, but um, we can't repeat them in the lab. So uh, I would categorize these as seam-shifted weight pitches with gyro. Uh, in that category, I would put the disco ball changeup and the laminar express uh, sinker or two-seamer. And the, these will not work if the pitch is efficient. You need the gyro in order to put the seams near the hemisphere line for these pitches. Um, they're effective, they move quite a lot, 
um, that can't be repeated in the lab without equipment that only exists at Washington State. And um, from what I've seen, most practitioners are not able to throw them consistently. And even Strasburg, from what I was seeing, showing before, most of the time can't, doesn't get this to work uh, as effectively uh, as he might like. Uh, it seems like he's getting better and better at it. But uh, I don't think, um, I think the orientations that are required to make this happen are known, but the degree of gyro perhaps is not. So um, that's, that's why they're not being used more than they are.